failing to register, uh, while we will enforce it, uh, we recognize it as the law that we respect it. Uh, we also have limited resources and have to set priorities for the office, and this will not be one of our top priorities. It's Patrick Keneally. He is the McHenry County State's Attorney. Chatted with him yesterday about the status of the gun and magazine ban. He also has a lawsuit against the state's gun and magazine ban that's still pending in court. Uh, so we chatted uh, with both uh, Patrick Keneally, the McHenry County State's Attorney, uh, but also with Troy Owens, who is the Assistant State's Attorney for McHenry County. Uh, so going all the way back, January 10th, Governor J.B. Pritzker enacts the state's Protecting Illinois Communities Act, which lawmakers defined certain rifles of semi-automatic nature and handguns and certain types of shotguns as, quote, assault weapons. They also banned the future sale and possession of expanded magazines, anything over 15 rounds for handguns and anything over 10 rounds for uh, rifles, plus 50 caliber uh, ammunition and rifles and detachments and all of this lumped together as assault weapons, and they banned those. It, you know, several hearings beforehand, but really the process of doing so happened in just a handful of days uh, rapidly during a lame duck session of the General Assembly. Governor signs it, and then you get lawsuits filed. Uh, you have lawsuits in the state court, lawsuits in the federal court. But what was interesting was the uh, McHenry County state's attorney suing in particular because uh, they also were being sued. <laughs> Uh, so I talked with uh, Troy Owens from the assistant uh, uh, state's attorney's office with McHenry County, and uh, he kind of spelled out where we're at in this entire status of uh, in this entire uh, you know space when it comes to the McHenry County state's attorney's office's lawsuits and uh, what to expect moving forward. So here's some of that conversation uh, with Troy Owens from yesterday. There were several cases that were running through the uh, northern district, uh, the federal northern district court. Uh, some were in the Eastern Division, some were in the Western Division. We filed ours in the Western Division. Uh, it was a little bit behind the other litigations uh, that were going through the court system. Uh, the ones that were in the Eastern got consolidated with several other cases. Uh, and actually, there was a, another case that uh, we were sued in the Southern District for, and uh, some of those cases were uh, consolidated there as well. Um, one of those consolidated uh, cases was the basis of the Seventh Circuit's uh, recent opinion, um, you know, upholding the uh, Protect Illinois Communities Act uh, as, as it's known or commonly known as the assault weapons ban. Uh, as it relates to our case, there is an issue uh, about what's called uh, Article 3 standing. Uh, there was a motion filed by the Attorney General's office. We responded to it. Uh, they replied to it, and uh, the judge who had the case has not, um, has not uh, issued an order or a decision. Uh, we're still waiting on that. Uh, if they are unsuccessful, um, they'll, uh, they'll answer uh, our complaint. Uh, and my guess is um, there might be some discovery, uh, but we'd move pretty closely to summary judgment shortly thereafter. It, it might very well be that, that the Supreme Court takes uh, the case that uh, the Seventh Circuit just ruled upon, might very, they might very well wait to do anything more in our case. I mean, that, that's not our decision. That's the judge's decision. He has the power to make those calls, and we'll, you know, we'll leave that to him. Um, <clears throat> the arguments, uh, essentially, is the Protect Illinois Communities Act, uh, uh, otherwise known as PICA, patently violates the U.S. Supreme Court's 2022 decision in Brun, B-R-U-E-N, uh, which set up a completely different standard. Uh, the you know predecessor litigation of Second Amendment. Um, my respectful uh, opinion of the Seventh Circuit's decision is it didn't really conform to the standards set forth by the Supreme Court in Bruin. So it seems likely that if I had to guess, I think the Supremes are going to get it. Oh, and I guess if you're asking our our argument, uh, uh, the, the the statute violates uh, PICA. It also imposes upon us. Um, a conflict. We we believe here that this, uh, the statute is completely unconstitutional. At the same time, we're stuck with the obligation of having to enforce it. So that when it comes to enforcing this, uh, and again, that was Troy Owens, Assistant State's Attorney for McHenry County. Uh, if you look at the Illinois State Police's website, and we're going to be probably focusing a lot on the uh, the frequently asked questions here in the uh, next month, because we've got a month left before the January 1st deadline. Of course, some other dates to look at, and I uh, did a review of uh, all the major cases that we've been tracking here in Illinois, tr 
challenging Illinois' gun and magazine ban and registry, there really hasn't been any movement. All right, so we're still, we're just waiting for some dates in particular. December 12th, you've got the Southern District of Illinois that's going to have the case uh, challenging the registry from the federal firearms licensees and other plaintiffs, saying they want the January 1st deadline suspended while the case plays out in the courts. So that's December 12th. They're going to have oral arguments on that. December 14th, you've got the state that has to respond to Dan Calkins' case in the U.S. Supreme Court about the uh, conflict of interest challenge and Second Amendment issues uh, as part of, uh, you know, trying to um, uh, address the Illinois Supreme Court's decision back in August. So all of that going on while you've got en banc requests to the Seventh Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. So clearly, we've got a lot that's going to happen in the next few weeks. It's just nothing has happened over the past 24 hours since we last checked. But regardless, uh, we're going to be checking out the the Illinois State Police Frequently Asked Questions website quite a bit. Uh, I really haven't followed this as much as some of you have out there in as far as how much it's changed, right? Uh, Because we've seen this change quite a bit. uh, But here you've got uh, tons of different... uh, frequently asked questions but if you go and check out you know how is this going to be enforced it says law enforcement agencies including illinois state police are charged with enforcing the protect illinois communities act throughout the state isp will continue to enforce the firearms owner identification card act article 24 of the criminal code of 2012 by partnering with local law enforcement through our violent crime intelligence task force the task force is collaborative efforts to reduce and prevent illegal possession and use of firearms firearms related homicides and other violent crimes all law enforcement officers will have access to the resources the isp has made available to the public to ensure that they are able to identify items regulated by the protect illinois communities act so what are those items uh a pistol grip on a crossbow a pistol grip on an airsoft gun Uh, are those things that are going to be regulated and if uh, you're found to have had them and police cross reference this list local police and they're like okay you got that So, you know, a lot of questions about these rules and these frequently asked questions, but I do have indication that uh, uh, Illinois State Police are in the process of filing. They have filed their uh, their 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 latest rules package. Uh, Let me see here. The uh, the stuff that came in uh, is uh, clearly that the second notice they completed that and they submitted it to the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules because we also have a JCAR meeting coming up in December. The Joint Committee on Administrative Rules could evaluate the rules and, and, and the responses, some of the responses that Illinois State Police have. So uh, I've got note that uh, they completed the second notice and submitted them late yesterday. Uh, I'm going to try to get my hands on those notes and those rules, that, uh, that second notice that was submitted, and we'll try to review that as well. Uh, so we'll be tracking that, the latest when it comes to what Illinois State Police are saying, as we have just a month left before the gun ban registry kicks in. Uh, so again, uh, Illinois State Police say it's going to be enforced by local law enforcement. But I talked with uh, Patrick Keneally, the McHenry County State's Attorney, about prosecution of this law. Uh, now, keep in mind, there's 102 counties in Illinois, at least 80 of the county's sheriffs have come out and said that they're not going to enforce this. I talked with one of those coming up. We'll share that with you, uh, Mike Downey from Kankakee County. But you also had prosecutors all across the state that were in opposition to the Protect Illinois Communities Act, saying that it's unconstitutional, it's unenforceable. Uh, There's even been arguments about, uh, you know, how a municipality or a uh, city or a, a prosecutor could possibly get sued for a lot of money if it's found that they violated somebody's constitutional rights under color of state law. Uh, So that's another argument against the Protect Illinois Communities Act. But regardless, uh, you've got, uh, you know, Illinois State Police during those three public hearings being asked how this is going to be enforced, and they referred back to, well, this is going to be handled by local county state's attorney's offices. They're the ones that are tasked with prosecuting these things. So an interesting case with McHenry County, Patrick Keneally, he is uh, the McHenry County State's Attorney, he filed a lawsuit against the state over the gun and magazine ban. And I chatted with him yesterday, well, well, that's still pending. And we heard from Troy Owens just moments ago, the assistant to McHenry County State's Attorney, while that case is still pending, uh, they're going to move forward as with the laws on the books. Here's uh, Patrick Keneally from yesterday. And go. One, two, three. And go. You know, uh, uh, like enforcing 
the law is not a mechanical or uh, sort of rote operation. Uh, every case is uh, depends on the facts and circumstances. Uh, we have to evaluate things like criminal history. We have to evaluate things like character. We have to uh, evaluate things like likelihood of reoffending. We have to evaluate whether or not the criminal action has been um, has been uh, whether it's been sort of resolved. Um, we have to so there's the, so no no two cases are alike and all depend on the constituent facts underlying each particular case and what justice demands. Uh, so there's many many options for people who may be charged with this type of offense in terms of how the case is ultimately going to be resolved uh, that would depend on a variety of factors. We have uh, first offender programs where people go through it. They go in front of a citizen panel. Citizen panel imposes some type of uh, penalty slash rehabilitation response. And if they complete that, the case is dismissed. And we have the Illinois Department of Corrections. So depending on uh, who's violated it, the underlying motivation for violating it, the criminal history involved, uh, you know, sort of the mind state of the person who was violating it, the flagrancy of how they were, it all just kind of depends on uh, on the nature of the offense. I can say uh, for our office that, again, uh, failing to register uh, while we will enforce it, uh, we recognize it as the law that we respect it. Uh, we also have limited resources and have to set priorities for the office. And this will not be one of our top priorities. So, again, uh, Patrick Keneally saying that in prosecuting cases that are people having items banned by state legislators that some say is protected by the Second Amendment. Uh, Keneally says every case is going to be unique, obviously, uh, but uh, prosecuting those cases solely is not going to be a top priority for his office. Uh, interesting use of uh, of language there, but I did also ask about uh, you know he can only prosecute cases that are brought to him by local law enforcement, right? Uh, because Illinois State Police, yeah, they're state police, but are they going to be across the entire state focusing solely on this? They have limited resources as well. So is this going to fall on to local law enforcement? What if local law enforcement aren't going to uh, uh, enforce this or or uh, you know put? Uh, uh, a police report together and uh, arrest somebody and and, and refer charges. Uh, so uh, Keneally says that, you know, the, the state's attorneys can't prosecute something that they haven't been referred to prosecute. Sure. So I employ lawyers. I don't employ investigators. Uh, we uh, we approve felony charges after law enforcement has uh, conducted an investigation and we review all of the evidence that's uh, acquired uh, to make sure that it would amount in a court of law to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So all of the evidence that is gathered that's being presented in a court of law does not come from the state's attorney's office, but rather comes from the investigating agency. In misdemeanor cases, uh, a uh, uh, police officer conducts the investigation and they're actually the ones that file the charges and then we deal with it once it gets into court. Um, so I know that there's a mix of misdemeanor and felony uh, offenses depending on uh, you know, the nature of the offense and depending on prior violations and things like that. So, uh, but the, but just to sort of bottom line it for you is yes, our prosecutions are entirely dependent first on a full police investigation, which establishes the crime uh, by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So again, Illinois State Police say that this is going to be enforced by the Illinois State Police and local law enforcement. During public hearings, they said, really, uh, the trajectory of such cases are going to be up to local state's attorneys. The local state attorney there uh, from McHenry County says they can't prosecute if local law enforcement don't refer a case. Well, what about local law enforcement? Let's get that perspective next here. Uh, I'll share a conversation I had with uh, Mike Downey from the Kankakee County Sheriff's Department the elected sheriff there uh, and uh, that uh, conversation is on here next all right be sure to like subscribe follow anywhere just search bishop on air uh you can find some merchandise if you'd like go to bishoponair.com and you can uh, uh support the program that way all right